So a couple weeks ago, I launched my first SaaS application. It's called Dinnerbee, and it is a platform for couples and roommates to save them time and money by allowing them to effectively and efficiently plan their meals throughout the week. And I launched Dinnerbee in an MVP state, meaning that it really does have the bare minimum features necessary to accomplish that goal. And I don't regret that at all. However, it does mean that there is some room for improvement. And last week I made a video where I was fully running through this process with my girlfriend because I really did build it for us and to improve our process. So I wanted to make sure that everything that I had built would work for us. And everything that was there did work in fact. However, we realized that there is a pretty glaring feature that is missing that would really make this even better for us. And that feature is what we are going to build in this video. And I have this stopwatch here, so at some point I'm gonna push that button, it's gonna start, and we're just gonna see how long it takes me to build this feature. And I'm gonna show you everything that goes into it, so that includes the UI and UX behind it, and of course all of the data that goes into making this feature possible. And in the past I've used Figma to kind of mock things out before jumping into building out a feature. In this case, my plan is to kind of write down everything that I have in my mind as it pertains to building out this feature, and then I'll kind of draw some things in terms of UIs that will kind of assist me as I am building this, but I'm not gonna go in with a full like Figma mock for this. All right, so I'm going to hop into designing this. I'm gonna start that timer, and yeah, we're just gonna see how long this takes, and I will bring you along into building out this feature. So I always like to plan my work before I start coding, you know, before I even hop into my editor at all. I kind of know exactly where I'm going with this feature and what things I need to build in order to accomplish that. So that's what this is, just a quick little 20 minute session to write down everything that is needed for this feature. Okay, as you can see, it's been about 20 minutes, so I'm actually gonna stop this timer because now I'm just talking to the camera. Cool, and we'll start that as soon as I start coding. But essentially I wrote down a bunch of stuff that I need for this feature. And to be more specific about what this feature is, essentially this is a shopping list feature. So when you're on a calendar, you're able to schedule recipes and schedule meals. And what I want to be able to do is have um, a button essentially that allows you to select a date range and it looks at all of the meals that you have in that date range and then it generates a shopping list based off all of the ingredients that are in those meals. This will be really nice because you know, you'll just be able to either copy that and, and bring it into like a, your notes app or something or you can just have it right in the app if you have internet access at your uh, grocery store. And this gets rid of the need to ever have to duplicate any data, you know, you're never going to have to manually type out your ingredients from all these recipes, you know, go from dinner B over to like your notes app or however you do your shopping lists. This just makes sure that you're able to do all of this once and generate it on the fly. Now, this definitely seems like a pretty simple feature. You know, it's just generating a shopping list, right? But there's actually a decent amount that goes into this. And, you know, the more that I wrote, the more that I kind of thought about my current data structure and the tools that I currently have at my disposal, there's definitely going to be a couple modifications that I have to make in order to achieve this feature. So let's start on the UI. This is kind of how I like to think about things. I like to think about it from the user experience first, and then I kind of work backwards. I say, hey, what data do I have to potentially uh, achieve this feature? And do I need to add a new entity, a new data structure, uh, or can I modify something that I already have to achieve this? So on the calendar screen, we will have a button that kind of kicks off this flow. So essentially, this is going to be the generate shopping list button. And a mode will pop where you're able to select a date range that you want to generate the ingredients from. This generates a nice list of all of the ingredients for meals in that date range and i'm going to have all the ingredients be selected by default so that if you want to just copy it straight from there uh, you're able to do that there'll be a button where you can copy it and bring it into your notes app which is probably what i'll do for the majority of the time or alternatively you'll be able to save this list as well in case you need to come back to it at a later point so that will take care of everything on the calendar screen now over on the home screen we'll have a new button that links us over to uh, our previously saved shopping lists so we can go check out all the shopping lists that we have and from there on our shopping lists page we'll be able to select an individual shopping list to go and see all the ingredients that are in that shopping list from there we'll be able to edit that shopping list as we need so if we need to add some more ingredients that say weren't in the recipes that you had in that date range or if you just need some things that aren't ingredients you know you need to go get some paper towels or some toilet paper you'll be able to add those to the shopping list so that you can take care of everything uh, and this one shopping list. 
Now, that's all fine and dandy. That's on the UI side. But when we start looking at the back end of things, I'll, I started to notice that I don't have everything I need to actually accomplish this. And the first thing that I actually do need to do in order to accomplish this is create a new entity type inside of my back end server, which is going to be this shopping list entity. Now, this shopping list is going to have an ID associated with it. It'll also have a name so that you're able to kind of categorize things nicely. Uh, it'll also have a list, which is a big list of strings for all of the items that are in your shopping list. And and finally, it'll have a, a foreign key which links it to a calendar in your system. So that part is not too bad at all, just creating a new entity. And we'll have a handful of CRUD operations off of that entity in order to get all of the shopping lists, save a new shopping list, get a single shopping list. But unfortunately, here's where things start to get a little bit more tricky. So currently in my application, I have another type of entity, which is an ingredient and ingredients live on recipes, but the current data structure for an ingredient is not super great for the feature that I'm trying to build. And more specifically, an ingredient in my application currently is essentially two things. It is the name of the ingredient and the quantity. But the quantity is just a string that has, you know, it might have one half tablespoon, and that'll be the quantity, but it's just a string. So it's not actually a number. And the reason that's kind of a problem is because say that you have three meals or recipes in your date range that you're trying to generate ingredients for. Now imagine on recipe one, you have two tomatoes in there. And then on another recipe, you have three tomatoes. And the final generated shopping list should ideally have five tomatoes, not two separate items that has two tomatoes and three tomatoes. And for that example, it might be okay for me to just split the string and use uh, the first part of that string as the way to join them. But this really does not work in scale for all types of uh, ingredients and all types of quantities. So I'm going with a bit of a different strategy here where I will be modifying my current ingredient data structure to be able to better suit this use case. I also think that this is just kind of a better structure for it in general and any additions and new features that I add in the in the future will probably benefit from this new structure. So instead of now just being a name and a quantity and the quantity being a string of two different parts, we're actually going to have three different fields now. So we'll keep the name and then we'll have two new fields. Um, amount is going to be a double. Uh, so a number essentially that allows us to do like you know, 0.5s or two or three or four. And then there will be a measurement, which is also a string and the final data structure for what one ingredient might be it'll be like 0.5 tablespoons salt now unfortunately this does mean that i'm going to have to write a script that takes any current ingredients in my application and thankfully there's not too many because it's really just myself and my girlfriend and anybody who's in the beta um, but i'll be writing a script that takes the current quantity and, and splits that up and puts the amounts and measurements into their appropriate columns uh, so that everything kind of just syncs over nicely to this new data structure. In addition, I'll have to make some modifications to my create and edit recipe flows that currently exist. This shouldn't be too terrible. It really will just be kind of just updating the payload and also making sure that I'm using numbers instead of strings for those amount values. Once that's in place, I'll be able to create a generate shopping list endpoint inside of my server. And what's gonna be really nice about this is, you know, I'll be able to provide that with a to and a from date and a calendar ID. And I'll be able to get a bunch of uh, ingredients for the recipes that are in that date range. And this is great because I'll be able to condense any ingredients that have the same name and have the same measurement. So if I have you know, ingredients on two different recipes that are um, salt and tablespoons, if one is 0.5 and one is two, then I'll end up with one item inside of this shopping list that is just 2.5 tablespoons of salt. So like I said, this is not a crazy complex feature, but they're is a decent amount that goes into building a single feature. So I wanted to bring you all in on that and just show you what it takes to design it. And now the fun part begins where I'll be implementing this. But first I'm gonna go cook dinner because it is my turn today and we planned this meal on dinner bee. So obviously I gotta go cook it. But I'll be back later tonight. I'll hit this timer again and then we'll get coding. Alrighty, I'm gonna stop this timer. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that the timer doesn't do hours. So this is actually supposed to be an hour and 27 minutes not 27 minutes um so yeah it's been a little bit over an hour that i've been working on this so far and i've got the majority of the back end pieces working at least the ones that were a little bit more um, a little bit more involved so this is including uh, the new entity so i have the shopping list entity 
modifying my ingredients data structure, and then also creating an endpoint to be able to generate a shopping list given a date range for a given calendar. It's kind of interesting. The way that I work is when I'm thinking about building a new feature, it's always like I start from the UI UX and then I design the back end off of that. But when I'm actually building stuff, I start with the back end and then I go to the front end to actually implement everything. So that's what I'm doing right now is finishing up the back end. I have a few more endpoints to create in terms of uh, shopping list CRUD operation. So I wish I had something more exciting to show you at the moment, but all I really have is Postman. And that's not that exciting. So I'll either be back when I have the back end fully finished or when I've actually created some of the UI features that will consume these uh, back end endpoints so that you can see something on a nice screen. So I'm going to go watch an episode of Silo with my girlfriend. Uh, we just started it yesterday. I watched the first episode and I've really liked it. So if you've seen it, let me know what you think about it down in the comments. But I'll be back after that, finishing up the back end. And we're at an hour and 27 minutes right now. And I'll let you know what our time looks like when I come back. Alrighty, so it is the next day. And that is actually two hours and 26 minutes, which is not bad. Um, that's how long I've been working on this feature so far. But I've gotten to a good place where the entire back end is built out. So this is the refactoring of the old ingredient entity and also the creation of the new shopping list entity and all of its related CRUD operations and uh, I've also gotten some of the front end done as well. So I've got like 90% of the UI that needs to happen on the calendar page. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. Alrighty, so I'm on the calendar page for Dinner Bee. And as you can see, I had a couple of recipes scheduled uh, for last week. And so what I can do now is hit this new uh, select dates button for the create a shopping list. And this will allow me to create a shopping list for all meals and all the ingredients that go into those meals for a given date range. So we got our start date and end date hit generate and nice this comes back to us these are all the ingredients that you need to make these two recipes at the moment you're able to select and deselect any of these ingredients if you don't want to actually add them to your shopping list and now just a couple of things that i have to do here are give the user a, an option to save this shopping list or to just copy all of the ones that they have selected so my thought for this is i'll likely hide um, these dates pickers because i don't really need them anymore um, and I don't really want them to be able to generate twice because then I got to clear all the old ones and get new ones. Um, so I'll get rid of this button and these two date pickers and then replace that with a save recipe button and a copy button. All right, so I'm going to do that feature and then I'm going to also do the couple UI screens that I have to do in order to view all of the shopping lists and then view a specific shopping list and also be able to edit any of the items inside of that shopping list. So I'm hoping that the next time I see you, I'll have all of that done and then this feature will be essentially completely done. So once again, it is the next day and something really tragic happened. I lost my timer. My bad on that because the whole point of this video is uh, to get a time on the speed run. But I can estimate that it was somewhere around five hours of total work to fully complete this feature. So yeah, I want to bring you into the computer and show you end to end what it all looks like. All right, I want to again start inside of this calendar and I've got a, a few more recipes uh, scheduled throughout this week. So I want to show you a couple things. So first off, we have uh, on the 24th and 25th, we have like the same recipe with the same ingredients. So I want to show you that uh, ingredients for these do get combined, which is really nice. Uh, so actually, if I just open this up real quick, uh, we can see that the ingredients for this are like two large yellow onions. So we should see when we uh, create the shopping list for this date range. Um, that that gets doubled and then it also adds the ingredients for this butter chicken so uh, we got this nice UI for this so we'll go the 23rd through like the 27th and generate this <clears throat> and in order to combine ingredients we do have to have them exact matches on the ingredient name so for example in that um, uh, first recipe I've got two large yellow onions for each of those so those did get combined but you can see in my other recipe uh, you know the, the name for this is just onion so it's not able to combine those but that's totally fine there will definitely be uh, limitations in that that I am okay enforcing so what's cool from here is we can now save this uh, recipe uh, if we want to reference it later or add new items to that list which is great if there are ingredients that you need to get from the store that aren't you know, part of these recipes. And we also have the ability to just copy this and if we need to put it in a notes app or something like that, we could do that. So I'll rename this list real quick. 
and hit save and that got saved and now we're able to go into this new feature in flow uh, where we're able to see our shopping lists so i've got a couple shopping lists here and here's that demo list that we just saved and now that we've come in here we've got our list name and we're able to see all the lists that we just added from that generate list feature on the calendar but what's cool now is again if i need to add some new items like toilet paper for example i'm able to add that and if we want to save this list this now gets updated so that um, this persists and you know we can take this list and have it on our phone at the store if we need it and check off items as we go down the aisle um, if we don't need these um, items for any reason we can remove the selected ones we can move individual ones and again we'll have to, to save this in order to persist it all right so that's the feature end to end I'm really happy with how it came out and that i was able to you know put it together in a, in a i think a very reasonable amount of time for a, a feature of this size uh, with all the back-end components that go into it and then again all of the ui pieces that i just demonstrated there so i hope you were able to gather something from kind of my thought process when it comes to building a new feature and then step by step how to implement it normally i start off on a, a little design making sure that i know everything that needs to go into this feature then i go ahead and build the back end build the front end and then you end up with a final polished feature if you stuck around this long i really do appreciate that let me know what you think about this feature if there's anything that you would add or or change about this feature just let me know i'd love to hear about it down in the comments but that'll wrap this video up i'm really happy that i was able to finish this feature in like i said just about five hours if you are interested in checking Dinner Be Out, again, I'll leave a link for that in the description. But thanks again for watching all the way through. I really do appreciate that. Have a great one, and I will see you in the next one.